you have to be careful with that because interfaces are nil only if the type and the value, both of them are nil. And if you're returning the po uh, pointer, then it's not going to be nil. So this kind of small details is actually to making the Go uh, different, putting the Go in a different uh, perspective. Like, I don't think Go is super simple, but it has a lot of details. What do you think about that? No, I agree. Like, this is... Um... You can get started in, in like most languages, like very simple tutorials, and just like just take on faith. Oh, if you follow this pattern, you'll be fine. But you don't really understand like why do you follow this pattern, and what those patterns are doing is like oh, there's actually like, there's a, there's, a, there's a dragon hiding behind that door. If you don't if you follow exactly this pattern, you'll never see the dragon. But then inevitably, you know, you're going to make a mistake. You'll you'll miss it. Like or you'll ask the question like what happens if I don't follow it, and all of a sudden, surprise, you understand. Oh, a Go interface has this really weird rule about nil. And it, it's kind of like this knock-on effect because Go has this weird thing where you can have a nil variable of some type in Go, and I can call a method on it, and it works. Um, the only language with something similar is Objective C, where if you, you can call if you have a nil type in Objective C, you can call a method on it, and it just does nothing. It just like kind of swallows it. I think it's been it's been like 15 years since I've written any Objective C, but I think that's the behavior. It just kind of just swallows the request. Um, in Go, it actually calls the method. If it's a if it's a pointer if it's a pointer method on on the on the type, and if that method can't handle being nil correctly, it'll blow up on you. You'll start getting panics. Um, but if it does handle correctly, it can, it can handle it correctly. And because of that, having an interface around like a, a nil variable of a certain type makes sense. Because of course, I can have nil variables; they can respond to uh, they can respond to method calls. And so you can't have a nil interface. That's on, where just the value is nil, not the type is nil, because it could actually respond to the methods on the interface. And it's kind of these knock-on effects from features combining is where I think problems start kicking in in all land. Not just, not just Go. I'll, I'll criticize Go for this one because it's, that's what we're talking about today. But um, all languages have these places where like features kind of intersect and overlap, and it, things are hidden. There's this um, Joel Spolsky. Now, this, this is from like 20 years ago. I can't believe it's been 20 years. He wrote this blog post called The, the, the Law of Leaky Abstractions. And what he's talking about, you build software in different layers, and you hide difficulties in lower layers in those upper layers. But no matter what you do, those lower layers, you can't completely hide them. Um, the, quote, his, the pull quote from the blog post is, all non-trivial abstractions to some degree are leaky. And so that's, that's, kind of, that's one of the things you're running into. Like you, the interface thing is really nice and clean. Nil is a nice, clean concept. But then in Go, oh, nil plus interface becomes a little bit scary. And this is true. I can talk about this for all the languages um, and where they lead.